services just went down the drain. So we're moving her. And in so doing, we'll be helping her brother move her and her possessions to a new facility, which is actually in East Providence, so we don't have as far to drive. Just remember, if you need me, Monday and Wednesday this week. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing praises to God, all you faithful ones. That God hears us in our fear and our sorrow. Where there was no way, God leads us in a new way. Where there was no mercy, God surprises us with fresh mercy. Where there was weeping, God invites us to step into a new dance. Please join us with Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness found in the Pilgrim Hymnal number 31. Thy 
will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. sacrifice for them and for us. So let us listen now as Jan reads from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous understanding, undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice, it is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by, com by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Gospel reading this morning comes from Mark's Gospel. Another crossing of Lake Galilee brought Jesus to another opportunity for healing. The daughter of Jairus, the head of a synagogue, was dying. While on his way to heal her, Jesus was pressed by the crowd, but still felt another woman in need seek healing by touching the hem of his robe. The two miracles provide a sharp contrast between the healing of someone who exhibited faith and another who did not. To Jesus' human need and God's willingness and power, not the demonstration of good faith makes the difference. So we hear these words now from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came to him, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, 
My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better. But rather, grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what, she had, what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the elder's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, go. Which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Here ends this morning's reading from God's Word. May God add His blessing and understanding for the reading and the hearing of these holy words. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word, and as we think on these things, open our hearts and our minds to you. Amen. In today's gospel, we heard two stories of healing, and there are also stories of power and hope, a bold, persistent, expectant hope. Now first we're introduced to Jairus, a leader of the synagogue, who emerges from the crowd that meets Jesus as he disembarks from a boat. Jairus approaches Jesus, falls before him, and begs him to heal his little daughter. And while a large crowd follows Jesus and presses in on every side, he begins to accompany Jairus to his home. Soon another person emerges from the crowd, and she is not there to ask for the healing of another, but rather healing for herself. There's no one there to advocate for her. No friends to carry her on a mat or lower her through the roof to be seen by Jesus, as has happened before. She has tried everything. She's done everything and bought everything that money can buy. She's seen countless doctors and has only grown worse. 
But something in her still has hope. Despite all she's been through, something in her believes, trusts, and even expects that if she simply reaches up and touches the edge of Jesus' cloak, she will be healed. She does not approach Jesus with the intention of falling before him or even of speaking to him. Perhaps she doesn't want to bother him or inconvenience him. All she wants is to simply touch his cloak and then maybe slip away. Slip away unnoticed and also healed. She comes up behind him and reaches out for the hem of his cloak. And she immediately feels the healing within her. How she might have escaped through the crowd, except that Jesus feels this exchange as well. And he begins to look around this densely packed crowd asking, Who touched me? But the disciples are befuddled. And Jairus is likely very impatient. But Jesus is insistent. Whether out of self-consciousness or out of sheer awe at what has happened to her, the woman steps forward and shares her story with Jesus and in front of this whole huge crowd. Jesus responds, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. Can you imagine what kind of relief she must have felt? Not only to be healed physically, but to be seen and encouraged by this rabbi. There had been no one to ask for healing for her. She felt she had to acquire her healing by making as little commotion as possible. By stopping and inviting her to tell her story, Jesus encourages this woman to see that not only is she worthy of healing, but also that she offers the crowd a witness, a witness of deep faith, persistence, and courage. And with his words, Jesus himself becomes her advocate. Now, after Jesus sends her on to live healed and at peace, he goes to heal another, the, the original journey. He and Jairus are soon on their way again, despite other people saying that hope for the daughter's life is already lost. Jesus enters the home, gathers with the young girl's parents and loved ones, and invites her to get up and walk around. She is healed. And everyone there is overcome with amazement. Both of these stories contain amazing healing, but also persistent hope. The woman has exhausted everything she has, all of her finances, all of her options, but hope emboldens her to reach out her hand and even when her body and her finances are depleted she does that in hope reaches out Jairus is told not to bother the teacher any longer that his daughter has already died but he and Jesus carry on continuing to the house to see her. Hope moves his feet. Hope carries him forward. There's desperation and depletion in both of these stories, yes. But hope 
is the power. And it is stronger. Hope asks for healing and persists. And it is clear in both stories that to hope is to know something about who this Jesus is. In their different ways, both Jairus and the woman reach out to Jesus in hope because they know who he is. To hope is to rest in the assurance that Jesus desires healing, wholeness, and fullness of life for all of God's children. Healing, physical, emotional, societal, takes place in many different ways. To seek healing is to hope for more wholeness, to believe that it is possible, in Christ, we believe such wholeness is not only possible, but also desired by the one who created us and the one who loves us. After a year of pandemic, a year of heated political divides, isolation and unrest, we're hungry for healing, not only within our bodies, but also our tired souls and our communities. To follow Christ is to know and to be encouraged that God desires this healing. God desires fullness of life and peace and wholeness. So, how do we reach out for this healing? What stories do we need to tell? Do we need to ask for help, for rest, for prayer, for companionship? Do we need to ask for an advocate? For what and where do you desire healing? And how might you seek it? To ask for and seek healing is an act of hope and a witness to the love of God. It is to be rooted in the knowledge that God loves us and desires wholeness for us and for our communities, too. Today, you might identify with Jairus and feel moved with compassion to advocate for the healing of another, knowing that we cannot accomplish another's healing for them, but we can use our voice for good. Or you might identify with the woman, depleted, but determined to take that next step in faith. Either way, may we seek healing where it is needed and remember that to believe in Jesus is to hope for and even expect healing and wholeness. Amen. Holy Father, you have shown to your church the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for our sakes became poor that by his poverty we might become rich. Give us generous hearts that our abundance may supply our fellow saints in their need. Let our preachers serve for the sake of Christ's call, not for earthly gain. And let those who have received excellence in faith, speech, knowledge, and every other gift of God's word provide richly for the preaching of the gospel and for the work of the church. Gracious Lord, your compassion does not willingly afflict or grieve the children. But your mercies are new every morning. Bestow your steadfast love on every home. Turn parents in kindness to their children. Make children ready in obedience and love toward their parents and each other. Let the young earn discipline and trust in you. And let fathers not exasperate their children, but be devoted.
to the fear and instruction of the Lord as examples to them. Holy God, be with the governing authorities and enable them to preserve peace and order in our nation. Hear our prayers for our president and our governor, our military and police, and all civil servants. Increase the spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and the nations of our world. Lord, you did not turn aside the bold request of Jairus, nor the timid faith of the unnamed woman. We implore you to hear our prayers for those in need. Drive away our fears and give us a believing faith. Give healing and strength to the sick and the suffering. Give comfort to those who mourn in the knowledge that Christ has destroyed death and all who die in him are only sleeping until you awaken them on the last day. All of these things and whatever else you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The freshness of God's mercy and love, the continued generosity of God's gifts to us, call for thanksgiving and generosity on our part. This church stands because of the faithful generosity of those who came before us. And its ministry grows today because of the hopeful, expectant generosity that lives in us. Let us gather our gifts together then and offer them to God in gratitude, in heartfelt commitment, and in praise. The morning offering will now be received. Strengthen our church, 
and the whole United Church of Christ, so that we grow together each day into a powerful voice for healing and peace. Amen. Closing hymn is, O Savior, let me walk with you. The 503 in a new century hymn. you this day and remain with you always. Amen.